Okay, thank you everybody for your patience and waiting as we are getting people into the meeting. And welcome to the JOLT webinar series. Uh, today's webinar is on the three food safety processes to help your restaurant best prepare against COVID-19. Due to the number of attendees in this webinar session, we have muted all webinar attendees. However, your participation is welcomed as we will conclude today's webinar with a Q&A session. So please feel free to submit any questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A tool. Also, if you're expect, experiencing any technical issues, please use the chat bubble below as we will do our best to assist you. My name is Jay Jensen. I'm a Jolt Solution expert, and I've been with the company for nearly four years and I've enjoyed identifying today's biggest challenges and helping find solutions in the restaurant industry. I'll be today's host, and today's webinar will feature Travis Jackman and Eric Marchin. Travis is our Jolt Implementation Manager, and he has been helping customers implement Jolt since 2017. He works directly with our customers, always been a rock star in sharing best practices in using our platform. Eric is the Director of Technical Engineering and has been with Jolt since 2013. He has specialized in the technical aspects of our product, and we look forward to hearing from both of them with their expertise. Today's webinar is being recorded. Upon completion of our presentation, we'll be sending out the recording to each of you uh, for anyone who's unable to attend today's webinar. Also, a poll will be going out to each attendee and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Jolt has been providing uh, solutions to restaurants over the last eight years and we're currently working with well over 10,000 locations worldwide. Our speakers have worked closely with many of you and with following guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Organization to help develop these lists of best practices around cleanliness and sanitization. We understand the last few weeks have posed a new set of challenges uh, for each of you and, and our hope is to share solutions to work together uh, to get through these difficult circumstances. So today, we'll be covering these three topics. First, what to do in response to the challenges that stem from COVID out, the COVID-19 outbreak. Second, how to properly follow protocol to protect your customers, your employees, and, and overall business. And third, we'll discuss when these procedures should be completed. And finally, as mentioned before, we will have a Q&A session. So let's dive into our first topic. The first question that many of us are asking these days is, what are the specific food safety processes that I should be incorporating into my business? So here to tackle this first question is Eric Marchant. Thank you, Jay. I'm sure like me, many of you over the last few weeks have received emails from just about every company you've ever interacted with, lining out their commitments to ensure health and safety. Uh, I probably even received a similar email from each of your brands. Now, these desires to protect people, that's not just lip service. We're in unprecedented times and we're facing really unique challenges. In many ways, restaurants are on the front lines and to many of, in our communities, the service and sustenance you guys provide is essential, are, are essential needs. We hope to help today by providing tools and guidance to succeed in your commitments. Now, helping restaurants not miss a step, this is at our core. So what can be done to provide clarity for your people on what to do, when to do things, how to do things right, how do we exp expedite the creation of these new habits. Here are three areas that we believe we can help. First, increasing accountability and visibility with employee and customer health. Now there's a few different things we're gonna talk about in here, but some core things are one, hand washing checklists. Now this is a simple, but an effective way to fend off viruses. We've already helped some increase their checks to, place, to take place even several times an hour, and we're gonna talk through especially how we're able to do that with repetitions. Additionally, there are things like employee, employee wellness checks. We wanna make sure that we're keeping track of the well-being of our people, keeping them informed on what they should be looking out for. Now, setting these checklists up will provide clear guidance right when the work is being done, and refining those repetitions as a reminder of the correct, correct procedures will quickly establish those better habits. Second, food safety. Now this has already been a, a major focus for any restaurant, and that's just become even more important in, in the situations we are in today. Now we're learning right now from health officials that coronavirus is potentially stable on surfaces for hours. This is increasing the need for surface sanitization. 
So some of the checklists we're gonna go through, we'll show a few examples of how we've already worked with some other customers to refine lists, to expand that focus on increased and proper sanitization of, pros, of, of surfaces. Additionally, expanding the use of corrective action has been a game changer for a lot of people. And when these key processes are missing your mark, it's really going to be important for you to see how you're going to be able to require specific corrective actions on those tasks. And the third thing is training. Um, this is something that some of you may already be doing, which is enhancing some of your lists with on-the-spot guides, but especially now enhancing this with the current and proper procedures and tying that information directly to tasks, this is going to be incredibly powerful to make sure that individuals know exactly what they need to be doing. Uh, so we'll walk through how you're able to, to attach pictures, videos, PDFs, other types of media as on-the-spot guidance, as well as the importance of, of being able to distribute any, any of the latest guidance that we're receiving from the health authorities uh, with those up-to-date procedures. Um, that dynamic nature is going to be key, especially in this fast-moving situation we're in. That way, the, best the, the current and latest best practices are available to your employees and your people as soon as you know about them. Now, at the end of this discussion, we've already created, like I mentioned, several starter lists. These are built off of lists using, uh, using content that we have built from health authorities as a starting point, and you'll have the option of subscribing to this content. Uh, here's an example of some of those lists that you'll have if you subscribe to that content. Great, thanks Eric. And, and I think that um, what we'll do is recap at the end of this, just to ensure everybody sees the content. We'll be hitting that at a later slide. We also have a, a number of new attendees into the meeting. And just to, to hit on this once again, if you're having any technical issues, feel free to use that chat at the bottom. And if you have any questions that you'd like to, to have us answer as a part of our Q&A, you can use that Q&A uh, chat bu button there as well. Uh, so we can hit that at the end of this session and welcome for those who just joined us. Uh, that leads us to our second question, uh, which is how do I ensure that food safety processes are being executed correctly? So Travis, why don't you walk us through this and then discuss how often these processes should be followed? Yep, yeah, thank you, Jay. So one thing to remember is when it comes to best practices or any form of checklist that are there and tips and tricks, um, when it comes to how to do them right, whether you're an independent standalone business maybe has one store with a drive through and a retail front, um, or if you even are a franchise group that has 30,000 franchises where there's a more of a bigger brand name to it, these tips and tricks will actually benefit everybody in any of those type of industries. Now, one of the main things that we wanna focus on is the CDC has provided a lot of resources that people are able to print out, they can post in their restaurant, in their location for their employees and customers that come through as well as these printouts, um, always be checking the CDC for the most recent up-to-date information. Again, you can utilize Jolt to help you with this, but some of the examples are how to protect yourself. They've created a, a handful of videos as well that you can utilize in your business. Don't feel like you're alone in having to build all this content yourself to have the perfect account to deal with all of this. There's a lot of people in the world that are helping each other out and building this information. One thing as well is if you wanna have more of that information inside or that content digitally in your Jolt account, you can do so in a few ways. So one of the new features we've actually implemented is called inline media. So if you look at the image there on the right of the screen on the hand washing reminder, you'll be able to see the check items of sanitize the sink faucet and handles, as well as a photo item, making sure that the hand washing station is correctly stocked with soap, paper towels, the information that needs to be there. But if you go a little bit higher, you'll also notice that there's an image of somebody washing their hands, as well as steps on how to properly wash your hands included with links. So instead of having your, your staff have to click on an icon and go away from the list that's there, they can see that media right away. Now with this new feature, it does require the Jolt 2 app. So be sure to download the Jolt 2 app and connect your device just as you would any other device that you have on Jolt Classic, as well as in this information, um, in the content that's there, you still can go full screen mode, and it does work with images, documents, and the actual training videos that you may want to input, just as 
um, the ICON version of information library does as well. Now, the other side is it's more than just a check mark. So a lot of times during this event, um, companies, because they want to be quick to make changes to their process and their business, one thing that they'll do is make check marks really fast. One thing we would advise and encourage and what the best companies do is they go more than just that. They go the step further of adding a photo icon or adding a QR code that's there. Again, the photos are really good as an example to say, this is how it looked at this time, or this is a way to prove that the task that I did was done accurately. As well as the QR code is great. It does require a little bit of investment on the Jolt admin to go and print off those QR codes and actually paste them where they need to be. But for accountability purposes, QR code is one of the best to ensure somebody's in the right area as well. So in the images, you'll notice this is a sanitation check, normally for towel buckets to ensure that every, the chemicals are at the correct PPMs. So in the top image, you see an employee did the strip. They put the strip on the device to ensure that it is the correct color. It's within that range. And then the workflow of it is you see the task on the next image for somebody to take a photo. At the bottom, this is an image of an image. It's kind of fun to see. That's what we're going through and following that process and standards as well. Creating the item as a photo is great to show that it happened, as well as I would even recommend as a manager to go in, take a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Instead of just saying to take a picture, take that picture in your business, the perfect standard, and then attach it as an information library file. So there's a point of reference for your employees to look at. Now, when to do it. So we have, we've talked about what you should be doing, some changes you can make to your business. Um, as Eric mentioned earlier, a lot of the things that restaurants are doing is increasing the frequency of how often they're washing their hands, how often they're wiping down tables. And they're wiping them with those sanitization, the actual sanitizer solution on it to ensure that you're not just spreading the disease, but you're actually killing the disease that is there, the virus that's in it. So when to do it, you can quickly adjust and add repetition sets to any list you have built, or even the list that we're going to be providing to you, that, to those that have subscribed. So this is the repetition sets. Um, going through again, the purpose of a repetition set is to ensure that the proper task displays at the right time and that the actual task is completed at the right time. So a lot of, when it comes to paper, a lot of employees will do the task, but forget to mark it, or they will mark it down at the, the incorrect time that they actually completed that task. In Jolt, you have these lists up here at the appropriate time. And one thing we've actually heard, as well as feedback from our, employee, from our customers, such as you that are on here saying that they would like the list to expire. As your employees, as these, as you were adding more and more lists to your Jolt account, we want to ensure that you're not overloading your employees, that they're not sure which list to click on. So we've actually added a new feature called list expiration on there. Now what list expiration will do is we notice the hand washing reminder, it's due by 930 and there's another one due at 1030. To help eliminate confusion for the employee and to make sure that they're doing the proper hand washing reminder, that 930 hand washing reminder will actually be removed at say 10 o'clock or 1015 just to ensure that the proper task is being done at the proper time interval as they work through it. Again, that's the list expiration feature that has been recently released. With any of the new features that we're talking about, just want to reiterate for those that may have joined, you do need to download the Jolt 2 app. One of the pretty things or one thing that helps as an admin, not just for the employees, is the performance tracking that's actually on there. So with this, you'll notice that there's what's called save filters on, or there's actually some reports that are actually saved. We, you'll hear the term save filters or save reports. We'll look here, there's an all sanitization lists, employee hand washing, hand washing reminder, and then some lists that are not even dealing with sanitization, but your current list that you have inside of Jolt, that you can build your own. Um, on the right is when you click into one. So in this example, we click all on all sanitization lists. You can click in and see all of the different list templates that your staff is completing as they work through and the percentage that is there. Yeah, perfect. And, and that, uh, that reporting is going to be really important for you guys and especially your ability to access that both from the tablet as well as keep in mind, everything in Jolt lives in the cloud as well. So whether you're able to be at your restaurant or not, you're going to have this visibility into what's happening at that site at any time during the day, um, as well as in, in a lot of your, of, of your cases, you may have multiple sites and you know, it's going to be especially important to be extra, extra vigilant on keeping, keeping an eye on what's happening. That's fantastic. And, and thanks, Eric and Travis, for sharing some of that and, and also giving us a, a peek into some of our new and updated features. 
Um, you know, these, these have been critical for any businesses that, uh, you know, getting visibility of completion and getting better ways to visualize this. Um, and some of that new functionality has just been, been absolutely helpful and, and fantastic for customers. So if you haven't had a chance uh, and you're a customer that you are uh, looking to get more information on how to use these tools, please contact your Jolt rep. Um, and, and, and I guess one other thing here, looking on to uh, this, this is an overview right here of the Jolt content package. Um, so to recap, this is, uh, this is everything you, you will receive as a part of attending today's webinar. And uh, we did send out that poll. If you have selected yes in the poll, we will automatically subscribe your Jolt, uh, J subscribe this to your Jolt account so you can receive this content package. If you selected no in the poll, you can always reach out to your Jolt rep for more information on how to receive this content package and then implement into your organization. Uh, that leads us to our final portion of today's webinar series. Uh, once again, thanks, uh, you know, thanks to each of you for joining today's webinar uh, and for participating in our Q&A. We'll be able to continue to field questions as they come in. We have a handful of questions already uh, coming through here so far. Uh, so I guess without further ado, what we'll do is just dive right into a Q&A session with uh, Eric and Travis. Uh, the first question it looks like we have here is, what would it cost to get these, uh, these lists loaded or these pre-lists that we have? Um, the answer to that is, this is free. This is content we wanna share with you. This is obviously a, a, a tough time, so I know I can answer that, that there's no cost to um, subscribing to this. Uh, we'll be handing that out free, like I said, and distributing that um, after this meeting. And we will also be sending you an email uh, recapping today's uh, presentation with a recording and uh, more information on content. It uh, looks like we have uh, another question that just came in. How can I ensure that all of my employees are individually complying with the hand washing expectations? So Eric, why don't I, I let you take a stab at that question? Great. Well, and, and hopefully we can even uh, go back to that, that uh, what we just looked at on that performance um, and watching the, the reports, you're going to have the ability to check in on any of those, those checklists. And like I said, those filters are gonna be key because from a hand washing standpoint, I can now set that up to just one tap, pull in my hand washing completion guides. Uh, additionally, um, you do have the option of setting up email or text alerts on any list that you choose. So if it's really important that to know if something got missed, have that immediately set up to where it sends off a, a text or, or an email uh, to let you know, a manager or an operator know if things are outside of compliance. Okay, fantastic. Thanks for answering that question, Eric. Um, I have a handful of other questions coming in. Feel free to keep any questions now coming in through that chat. It's at the bottom of the, uh, of the Zoom conference. Uh, there should be, a, at the bottom of your screen, a, a place to, to chat in there. A couple other questions we've just had come in. Um, how can I confirm that the expanded expectations are being followed? So that's kind of similar, uh, you know, Eric, to what you were just saying there. Anything else you want to add on that? I, same answer there. That immediate visibility from using especially those filters is going to speed up the guide on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, next, next question. Uh, I only have one tablet in the store. How can I handle when several of my people will need to check things off at the same time? Travis, why don't you go ahead and answer that one? Yeah, just to confirm, I want to make sure I understand. So some restaurants or some companies only have one device that is designated as the Jolt tablet. Um, from there, as you're increasing the frequency of your list, as well as training documents that may be input and you want to have more accessibility, you do have the, uh, the ability to add more than one device. So you could either purchase another tablet, if purchasing is obviously not in the works because of what's going on, you can take any old tablet or even cell phone that you may have, as long as it's Android or iOS, so Apple device, you can connect those actually to the Jolt platform for your location, and you can have many devices occurring at once. And since it is cloud-based, they will not interfere with one another. There, one thing to note too is if you are adding more devices, you can actually do that on the Jolt admin web portal where it comes to scanning a QR code or entering a location code, that can be found there as well. Fantastic, thanks, thanks Travis. Um, it looks like we have a question about the Jolt 2 app that we were talking about. You get the, some of the new features and, and the reporting. Uh, it looks like the question is, I can't see the reports tab on Jolt 2 and I've updated the app, any ideas? 
Um, I'll, I'll just take a, a stab at that one really quick. And if anyone else wants to chime in, you can. But currently right now, because this is a, a, a new feature, if you are wanting to get access to that, just contact your Jolt rep directly asking uh, for them to be able to uh, show you how to unlock that. So that, that would be our best practice right now. Anything to add on, on that, you guys? No, it, yeah, and, and unlocking, once again, there's not a cost on that. We wanna make sure that you guys understand. Um, we want you to have access to all of these new features that are, are going to be helpful right now. Okay, it looks like we have another question that just came in. When you send out the recap of this webinar, will I be able to forward it to all my franchisees to, uh, so they stay informed and know how to access the list you have built? Uh, yeah, Travis, you've been involved with a lot of customer interaction there. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and answer that one? Yeah, so with sending out this webinar, we'll actually post it first off in an email that we're going to be sending as well as we'll post it for everybody to have access to. Um, if you would like more access or would like this inside of your Jolt account, work with your Jolt rep. We can actually include that into your, your tablets, into the actual app itself. Um, on that line as well, inside of Jolt, if you do subscribe to our content that we're gonna be pushing out, those lists, the hand washing reminder, the back of house sanitization and so forth, there will also be the information library will be full of other content as well. Um, so some of those will be information from the CDC that we'll be pushing to you. Again, that information can be found on their website as well as you do have the ability to go and add that information yourself. There will also be an area, um, more of a Q&A or information about training and support articles on how to best build these reports how to apply the list expiration. So you could easily go there to find training as well as reaching out to support to get that best, to get the best practices into your business. Perfect. Uh, we, we've, uh, we appreciate all the questions. We actually have a handful of more coming in and, and we um, we're willing to take as much time here as, as we need to answer these questions. We're in no rush. So feel free to keep these questions coming in. I think it's a really helpful discussion. Uh, next question uh, is, are there recommendations on how to maintain the sanitation of the Jolt tablets themselves. Great question. And that's, that's one that is really important right now is just sanitizing everything. Those tablets getting touched all the time. So Eric, why don't you go ahead and, and answer this one? Yes, perfect. Yeah, so yeah, there are recommendations on that. Um, in fact, uh, we can even drop in some videos on, on this of, of sanitizing electronics. In most cases, there are, there are sanitizing um, wipes that are um, safe for electronics. And as long as you are not submerging that, you're going to be okay. But the expectation there would be, as soon as people are working with this, wipe down the tablet with that uh, sanitizer wipe, um, and then move on. In fact, one thing that you may want to do on some of these lists is you could even add in a either a, an, a list itself that is on a repetition that is a, all right, every half hour I want to, to make sure that people have been paying attention to sanitizing the tablet, or, added as a as a the last item on a checklist uh, say that would say all right i'm checking this off to say as soon as i check this off i will wipe down the tablet great thanks thanks eric uh, for answering and tackling that question uh, a lot of a lot of people concerned about the the uh, cleanliness of everything in in their restaurants and in their businesses so um great great answer there next question uh how how well or how can I see how well my store is doing after I implement implement these lists? And so I imagine you're referring to all these new checklists that we've just uh, put together that you can then implement. So Travis, why don't you you dive into how we can can answer that question? Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about the reporting inside of the actual app itself, as well as on the web portal. So you do have access to view how well your staff is completing these lists anywhere you are, as long as you have access to the internet or on the tablet. One other best practice that is great to utilize, especially in a time of high importance, is the actual list notifications. So as a staff member, I'm going through and completing my lists. I'm washing my hands, I'm sanitizing the, the surfaces in the break room, sanitizing the drive through window, whatever it may be. As you're going through and doing those, the list could actually be set up to send a notification to the manager or the owner that is actually wanting to ensure that things are being taken care of. I know notifications are, sometimes scary to implement because you don't want to notify and cry wolf. Um, a good best practice is as you have these big changes or big processes changed in your business is to utilize those notifications to make sure your behavior is being changed properly and those lists are being done 
instead of you having to go to the web portal, you could be notified right away if there's any issues or if things are being complimented or if things are working well so you can reach out to your staff and say thank you to them. They're obviously having to make changes in, in their business. So looks like a couple other questions uh, still the field here. Um, next question we have, when will the list be available to subscribe? Are they live after this call? Um, so yeah, I, I can go ahead and answer part of that and it, Travis, feel free to chime in if you have any additional information on that. So uh, if you did select yes in the poll that you wanted that to subscribe automatically to this, it should be done relatively quickly here. Uh, Travis, do you have an exact time frame on when that will be able to be subscribed to if they selected that option in the poll? Yeah, so 5 p.m. is the date we're gonna turn everything on for everyone to have. We could turn it on sooner if we get some feedback that you'd like it right away. As we go through that as well, just for those of you that are wanting, that have never taken information or content from whether it be another customer, another company, um, that information will be put into your account automatically. And from there, feel free to go in and change that content. The list, the information files that are there, that's in your account. You'll be able to change almost everything in it. You'll be able to change when those lists appear, that repetition set to ensure that it's in, actually in your business. So if, you're, if you wanna have the hand washer reminder every 30 minutes as to opposed to an hour, you can do that. Same thing if you want to change maybe some of the text. So an example would be cleaning the restrooms. Maybe you have two restrooms that you're leaving open for all of your guests to come in or for your employees that are making sure that they're following the correct procedures and that area is clean. You could go ahead and actually add more items to those lists. Don't feel like you're just constrained. This is just generic content that we've found is the best way to ensure sanitization in your business. Working with, again, the largest brands in the world, as well as the independent companies um, that have one business that are very focused on every little detail in their business. And, that, and on that point, Travis, you brought up the, the fact that you could change the workflow, you could change the order of these lists. Obviously, that's, that's a huge benefit of using Jolt and being able to easily do that. So feel free to do that when, when you do uh, subscribe. Uh, and if you don't subscribe, that's fine. Once again, you can still reach out to your Jolt rep to discuss uh, other ways of, of getting that content uh, or using that content as well. Um, another question we have here coming in, um, are these only templates or will that stay as permanent? Uh, Eric, why don't you go ahead and, and we wanna make sure we understood this right so um, as well. So if you have any clarification on that, let us know. But Eric, go ahead and, yeah, and answer that question. Sure. Yeah, I'm assuming that temp is temporary since, we're, since you referred yeah. to permanent afterwards. Uh, the, yeah, just this actually piggybacks off of what Travis just said. These lists will be lists that, that can then be, um, can exist directly in your account. We don't have any expectation or, or plan on shutting that off. Um, we want to make sure that everybody has these as a good starter who wants it. And then you have the control of being, being able to, to decide, all right, I want to unsubscribe from these at some point, or if you want to keep them uh, moving forward, there's no plan on making these temporary. Great. Um, uh, we have a, a couple other questions here. And once again, we, we know um, we've, we've set up this meeting for 30 minutes. We're, we actually don't have a, a hard stop here. We're welcome to, you know, allow you to continue to be a part of this conversation. I think so far it's been very helpful. Um, we've learned a lot from, from you in this whole process uh, as well and, and are happy to be able to, to you know, share this content with you. But uh, I, I know with a lot of these questions, it seems that we may be able to get even some further clarification just for a few minutes here. Uh, Travis, why don't you take us into the product a, a little bit to, to actually show this a little bit more hands-on? That might answer a, a couple of these other questions that are coming in. Oh, for sure. Thank you, Jay. So what I'm going to first show is the actual web portal itself of where the content will be input. So you know, this is the Jolt content that was input that I subscribed to, as opposed to my content that I built in my business. So let me pull that up real fast so you're able to see. So as an example, here's a test account that we have set up. So if I am uh, in your shoes at this point, looking at this screen, the left side is going to be the information or the list that you have built, your processes, your best practices, are going to be on that left side of your content group. And then on the right side, we can see here that we have a Jolt COVID-19 processes with all of the lists that are there. So your, the information will be on the right side if you're in content group mode. Those of you that are not content group admins or are only able to have locations, they'll be kind of mixed in. But again, we have the name Jolt. Um, 
underneath each of those to ensure that you can see, all right, this is Jolt's content, this is my own content that I have. As well as when you're looking at the list, so here's the hand washing reminder list that's gonna be put in the account. Uh, it's very simple, three items to ensure that those are taken care of. That inline media that we were talking about, as you have this information library section that you can choose the items you wanna have, from there, if it wanted to be in line, there is a display attached in line checkbox there. Again, if you're not seeing this information in your own account, just make sure to reach out to your Jolt rep to make sure this is turned on for you, as well as that you are able to see this. And you will have the ability to go in <clears throat> and change the text if you would like. So here we can see, check the hand washing station to make sure it is fully stocked with soap and paper towels. Let's say in your business you have two stations, you could just come in here and say, click on the little pencil to edit, make that word plural so there's two and click save and this will change your location and your business's list only again you're not changing anything for any other company it's just put into your account that's there and and on that note really quick travis i'm going to interject because of a couple questions that have been coming <clears throat> in here um one of the questions was it, this content is it in the web portal or the jolt 2 app uh so just just walk them through the difference just i mean this what we're lo what we're looking at right now is the is the web portal so the the information is going to be loaded here and then maybe talk about how as they have jolt 2 how that then flows to to the new app or the old app for that matter yeah so just as a reminder the jolt admin web portal that we're looking at this is where everything will be built um, if you want to come in and build your own list your own processes maybe add employees maybe you have new employees that you've hired to help in your business make sure everything is clean that is going to be on the Jolt web portal. The easiest way to get there is to just go to jolt.com and to sign in with your email and your password that you have set up. Anything that is built here can be actually turned and is actually executed on the tablet as you work through that. So as an example, let me switch my screen over. Just to ensure it should be seeing my, the Jolt 2 tablet right now. So this is a, an iPad that has a Jolt 2 app downloaded. So we were just looking at a hand washing reminder on the actual admin web portal. But from here we can see it in the app. So here's that inline media we were showing of when and how to wash your hands. Again, this comes from the CDC. Um, you can add your own content if you would like. You can also click to watch videos that are from the CDC as well as the tasks that need to be completed. So sanitize sink, handles and faucets. That same question that was on the list template that is being pushed into your account will appear on the tablet as well. And you're able to just click submit items when those are completed. Um, as well, when it comes to the information library, because maybe not everybody wants to have lists or you already have lists pre-built in your business, is this area called library. So in the library, you'll see a category called health best practices. Um, it may say Jolt in the coming days just to help ensure that we're not using the same titles or names that other companies may be having in their account. And inside of here, there's different categories. So you'll have Jolt training and support articles. There'll be printouts that you can have. You could add more information to these as you would like as well as resources. So just an example for the training resources, you'll be documents as well as videos for inline media, the repetition sets for list expirations as you work through those. And then on the left, you'll also come down to reports. Again, I just have three of these saved that'll be pushed. Again, you can have, this will be mingled with your other reports that you have built. The reports do need to be built on jolt.com in your actual admin portal. Then from there, you can push them into the tablet to be seen. So just as I click through all sanitization lists, we can see here the drive-through sanitization, the front of house and the restroom were all completed at 100% for the date range of the last 30 days as you work through these. And, and so Travis, the, the, the view that we're looking at, obviously this is you know, for in the store, mostly you know, for upper management at the store, like a GM to be able to have access to these reports where in the past, they would have had to you know, do some digging in the back end. So a, a huge um, new feature there for um, access. And obviously all this access can be controlled at different levels in terms of what type of visibility that's still coming from a, you, know, you as an operator or an owner. Um, but then on the back end, we also have had a lot of new enhanced reporting as well. So it kind of goes hand in hand with our updated reporting from the back end as well as from the front end on this, on this tablet. So, uh, and if you have other questions about uh, these new features and, and the new enhanced reporting or the content itself, either feel free to keep that coming in or contact your Jolt rep. We'll be happy to, to help you uh, get any of those questions answered. Um, I'm trying to see if we've missed any last questions. Looks like we have one here. Um, this question is, 
will we be doing continue will we be i would like to have an uh, additional training on this topic will you be hosting another webinar uh eric why don't you go ahead and tackle that yeah i mean and this this also comes back to the the poll that we put out there we we are here to help and we're here to take your feedback so if this is helpful please let us know we'd be happy to run additional webinars um I just just to let you know though a webinar is not the only way that you can get help on this uh, everyone also has access to Jolt's um, support team as well as your own customer success rep here at Jolt and they are, you know, they're, they're here and available to, to help you. Great. So it looks like um, at, at least at this part, uh, we've got one, maybe one last question and, um, and we can stick around if anybody, uh, you know, needs additional support or has additional questions. Um, it says, are you going to be continually updating the content as the CDC does? Uh, Travis, you might give us some insight on that. So we will do what we can to update the Jolt content to match what the CDC says. Um, inside of the actual information library and some of those files, they will reference the links into the CDC website just to ensure that it is up to date. Again, we are not the CDC company. We're not partnered with them. They're just a great resource for you to utilize and for us to use, to utilize, to help you you guys are for you to be up to date with everything that's going on. Um, especially as business owners, you do want to ensure that you are up to date with everything happening as well as your staff should be aware of any new uh, information we find out about the COVID-19. As Eric mentioned, we've recently found more information about how long it lasts on surfaces and that does want to ensure that we change behaviors to match that information. Yeah, it looks like uh, we had somebody looking for a little bit of guidance on on uh, the simulator here. Uh, so this question uh, you said you mentioned the ability to notify management when tasks are done. Uh, can you show us how? Is that something you could walk us through here in this simulation right here, Travis? Yeah. So in, from that, that's actually going to be built on the admin web portal. So somebody switch my screen over from the simulator into the web portal again. Yeah, you should be seeing the hand washing reminder list again, we're using this as the example. So when you're in the edit list mode, if you want to create notifications for this was not completed or it was completed for more positive reinforcement for your staff, you click on the settings here. And then once you're in the settings, on the top right, you're going to see new notification. Where you can click new notification and this will actually go off of the roles that you want to have in your business. So if you have roles designated to general manager or your legal team, your team members, your director of operations, um, your assistant manager, you can select those roles and then you would choose how do you want them to be notified. So it could either be a text message or an email. What we found is text messages are great for any alerts or any notifications of high importance that you want to receive. Email's best practice is if the list itself has content that you want to see. So if you notice that your staff needs to do better or you implemented a new practice of the sanitization, taking a picture of that strip, I would recommend choosing an email that when that list is completed, you actually get a picture or an email that includes the photo your staff took of that strip, making sure that it isn't the correct PPMs. And then you can choose when. So you can have when an item is overdue. The phrase overdue is aligned with repetition sets. So if the hand washing reminder is due at 2.30 and that hand washing reminder was not finished at 2.30, you'll get a notification at that time because that list is overdue. You also have the ability of if a list is completed, so this is again, more of that positive reinforcement or just to make sure the best practices are being implemented correctly to answer a question earlier. From there, you can see that image, hey, sanitization strip, it was done, check my inbox, boom, there's the picture that I wanna have to make sure that it is being done properly. While I'm on this screen, I know we were talking about the expiration of lists and making sure that we don't clutter the iPad with all of these new processes that are there. To change the repetition set or when that list appears and is available, you also can do an expiration. So come down here to change repetition sets, select the repetition set that is there. This one has a lot of display times and due times because it is a hand washing reminder. But if I wanna change when it's due as well as when it expires, this is the new feature here of how long after the due time should this list expire? So again, a, an example, my hand washing reminder, my staff needs to make sure that they wash their hands every hour. To make sure that happens, my list appears at 10 o'clock. The list is technically due, at 10.45, because I want to have a 15 minute window. But by 10.50 or 10.55, I have that list expire and they're no longer working on that list, they're working on the new one as they work through this. 
This does work with basic checklists as well as any advanced lists that do stay on the iPad, such as like an employee quiz or an employee well-being check. Perfect. Thanks, Travis. Uh, and, and I know we've gone over time. We, we had kind of planned for that just in case the questions went over. So we appreciate you sticking around. Um, if this is rolled into any of your other uh, meetings for the day, we've appreciated you sticking with us and for joining today's webinar. Um, I, I found it uh, very helpful. Uh, hopefully you guys have as well. Um, I also know um, as we are planning future webinars coming up in the future, we'd love to get your feedback on what was beneficial, what you guys would like to, what uh, you would like to see in future um, webinars as well. So please uh, feel free to, to have that feedback come our way. And finally, we've had great participation on the, uh, the Q&A, the chat line, as well as the poll. Uh, if you haven't yet submitted your answers for the poll questions, we'd love for, for uh, you to submit that so we can get your feedback and know how we can best help you get this content into your account. So um, I think that about wraps up all the questions we have. Thanks again for joining today. Thanks to, our, uh, to those who featured today, Travis, Eric, and once again, we appreciate your business. We, we love working with you and we appreciate all the um, insight we were able to share coming from you. Uh, and, and that was really helpful across the board. Thanks and we'll look to, forward to seeing you uh, on a future Jolt webinar. Uh, in the meantime, best of luck and we will be in touch soon.